If you're not listening to Alina Barrera's music, you are sleeping, niece. Wake up. First question is from Don W, who wants to know about my filming setup. I film everything on my iPhone. I have an iPhone 7 and an iPhone 10. And I hooked it up to a bolt, which I attached to an old mic arm. And I bought a little stand, which can hold the phone. And then I attached the mic arm to either an old chair, or sometimes it can go on the table, depending on how I want to film. For this particular setup, I'm using the chair just because I can maneuver it all the way around the larger canvas. The most important thing about filming, considering I'm using the iPhone, is lighting. I bought these really cheap box lights from Amazon. I left a link down below, just make sure that if you do get these, the wattage is correct. And then I just have a little stand here where I put my laptop to make sure I can see the final artwork so I don't make any mistakes. I think a lot of people ask the question, how do I find my art style? But they don't realize it's actually about building. It's not about finding. You already have most of the key elements that you need to build your style. You already hopefully have the passion for it, base interests, which I'm sure expand past art. And you have a baseline level of skill, regardless of where it is. A big mistake you can make is looking too closely at your contemporaries. You look at their work and go, damn, like I wish that my work looked like theirs, but the problem is you end up being a clone. Remember to build your art style, not to look for it. Which leads into Felix's question about what alternative art forms I use as inspiration. For me, I use a lot of fashion as inspiration. A lot of the colorways and themes that I use are based on trainers and runway shows. I also draw a lot of inspiration from old cartoons and anime that I used to watch along with video games. The simplistic style of a lot of my drawings sometimes kind of links back to old Cartoon Network shows like The Powerpuff Girls and Samurai Jack, that really angular drawing style. Also, you notice that the way that I render, I don't blend. And I got that from playing video games in the past, like Wind Waker, which was cell shaded, which basically means that rather than having a gradient where the shadow is, it's a hard line. You'll know that you're starting to develop an art style when you're seamlessly weaving these things into your style and the references are clear but the only way to reveal them is through context now following on from that i have a question from tina who has a bunch of interests who wants to know how you prevent yourself from getting overwhelmed and stopping altogether what's important to nail down is who are you at the core of your being the things that you do when you're happy and the things that you do when you're sad is there a correlation for example, certain people like to play video games. When they're happy, they play video games. When they're stressed, they play video games. That's because at their core, who they are is the gamer. The thing that you'll do first, the thing that you'll do last, is who you are. Focusing on that. And if after doing this, you still have multiple things, and you still get that feeling of just being frozen by anxiety, really try and pinpoint where the value is in what you're doing. Is the value in the response that you get from others? Is the value in getting it right the first time, without any mistakes? Where's the fear coming from? If it's the first, understand that you're never as good as they say you are, and you're never as bad as they say you are. Try and keep an assessment of where you are and where you're going. As long as you're moving towards that goal, you should never fear taking the next step. If your problem is perfectionism, understand that everything that's not growing is dead. So it means nothing if it doesn't turn out exactly how you want it to. Don't skip the steps, make the mistakes, Move forward, rinse and repeat. And on a completely unrelated note, Ice Machine wants a plant tour. I actually only have one plant, it's a fiddle leaf fig. For the care routine, I just add a little bit of fertilizer into some water and I water it once a week on the same time, the same day, usually on a Sunday. Fiddle leaf figs are very fussy and you need to spray them a lot to keep them moisturized. But we live in a hard water area, so I end up having to wipe the leaves off a lot to get rid of the lime scale, which is gross. Aston Way seems to have figured out my big secret. Obviously, my first name's Denzel, and Corey is in my alias name, so he asked me if I'm Denzel Corey, which is exactly why I don't use my real name. 
As I'm sure you all know, there's a rapper called Denzel Curry, and my birth name is Denzel Curry, even though we spell our names slightly differently. That still posed a massive SEO problem for me, which in short means if I want to get searched in Google or if I want people to find my brand or my Instagram, it becomes very hard because someone who's actually famous will pop up all the time rather than me. And also because I'm a giant nerd and I've always wanted to have a weird name on the internet, I chose this one, which Jordan clearly pointed out is because I am in fact Jamaican. Or well, at least that's my family background. I was born and raised in the UK, but my roots are Jamaican. But for anyone who doesn't understand the reference, your cousin Roach asked, where did I get my name from? Curry go is a very popular dish that we have in Jamaican culture. And if you haven't tried it, you need to get on that now because it bangs. Once I figured out my name, I had to work on the logo. And Shelly Shimon asked how I came up with it. When I was a kid in primary school, we used to write words on their side to pretend that we were writing in Mandarin. <laughs> And it was just something that I remembered while I was doing my logo. So it's actually something that I did for this. I know it's kind of weird, but it kind of links to the theme of a lot of the Asian mythologies that I like to incorporate in the storytelling that I do in my work. I basically made the font myself from scratch, just all the different letters, and then I turned them on their side. My cousin Mika, who actually watched my videos, asked me if I consider myself to be a role model, which I suppose makes sense of the question because the kids, Aki, Kalia, and Makai, they all watch my videos as well. And it's kind of weird to know that real people, whether they're in your life or not, are actually looking at your work and I guess being impacted by it. But even though I don't consider myself to be a role model, I do try to, at the very least, curate my social presence. I just want it to be all about the work and not so much about the person. And moving forward from that, all I need to do is keep building. I wanted to experiment with something new so I picked up this jelly gouache set. I first found it on Amma Wanda's YouTube channel, she'd done a couple of videos about it. When I was messing around with them I found that they're super smelly and they dry super crackly, but they're a great cheap alternative. Speaking of which, Alana asked for any suggestions for people starting out with a custom business even if they don't have the resources available yet. One of the great things about living in the time that we do is that you don't need to be a starving artist anymore. There's a whole bunch of sites that do on-demand services, so if you wanted to make stickers or any sort of products to sell with your artwork, there are some limitations, but you can go onto websites like Redbubble or Society6. You just make your artwork, upload it onto their system, and you're ready to go. However, both the freedom of design and actually finding the audience can be quite limited. This leads me to Mary Art's question on what are the most essential tools and methods for marketing yourself. Social media is the ultimate networking event, as you all know, but it can be really hard to get your foot in the door or get any sort of traction. I went into this super in depth in my how to make a brand video, which is linked above, but the short summary is you want to figure out your target audience. Usually the best thing to do is make your target audience yourself. Then you want to figure out what they like and where they are. So if your audience is art, more than likely you're going to find them very much on Instagram because Instagram is very pictorial. Then you want to go back to your target audience and fulfill a need that nobody else is. And that's basically adding your unique perspective on whatever you've chosen. From there, you just want to find multiple ways of monetizing. For example, I have a clothing brand. I also sell original artwork and I sell digital downloads on my website. I'm also working on other things like Patreon, but I just want to make sure that I have enough perks to make sure it's worth you guys well. Never lock yourself down to one stream just because as creatives, it's very tricky and you don't ever want to be boxed in, especially not financially. Speaking of networking, Rain Corinne asked, are there any other artists on YouTube that I'd like to collab with? Of course, the answer is yes. Brian from his channel Schmood was a massive inspiration for me actually building my channel up. I had an idea of it, but I think it kind of crystallized as soon as I saw his work. Koki also has a great channel. It's a mix of lifestyle, art, blogging, and just general advice. His vibe is super cool, and I think it's the definition of not being boxed in. I also really like Matthew Sorgi. I think his vibe is just so chill, and it's real interesting watching a young artists balance real life along with just working hard and grinding, you know? And I think a wild card in there is Iwazumin. I discovered the channel about a month or two ago, but it's absolutely amazing. Like everyone says in their comments, she owns the word aesthetic. It's just this really calming mix of someone living just their most beautiful life, combining anime, food and lifestyle, a little bit of art. It's just absolutely a great channel. 
But if you want to go more on the graphic side, Hashite asked, what's a good channel to learn graphic design? I learned all of my basic skills from a channel called Gareth David Studio. He does these long form multi-video tutorials on Adobe software. And basically once you finish the tutorial, you can go on to do your own projects because he's covered every single skill that you'd need. There's many more channels, but those are just a few that I really want to highlight. If there's any channels that you think I should know about, just link them below. Speaking of streams of income, I've made digital download versions of the artwork that I've just painted in my sketchbook. I did three different colorways and they're available for $3 on my website, corrigo.com. Thanks for supporting my art. And now let's move on to showing you how you can take your own photos for social media. As I mentioned before, one of the ways that I support myself as an artist is through my clothing brand. I basically have garments which I sell on my website, corrigo.com. All of them are printed with my artwork. And since I'm pretty much a one-man band, I have to do all of the marketing myself. So hopefully you'll find some of this information useful on how I do it. Even if you do something completely different from me in your creative practice, a lot of these principles will still apply. First thing I do is normally choose the shoes and the outfits that I want to do. I normally color code them to best accentuate the product that I'm trying to sell. And with any sort of video or photography, lighting is always the most important thing. So I use the same box lights as I use for my videos. And I have a small tripod, which I put in front of a mirror. And then I mount my phone onto the phone stand and I use this to take pictures. I have an app which I use to take multiple pictures while I'm standing far away from the camera. Once I press the button, I just walk over and do a few poses. This is super cringy if you're not used to it, but eventually you pretty much get the hang of it. And then once that's done, I'll pretty much go through my selection of images, pick the best ones and import it into Photoshop. Because I'm doing this for social media, the document that I'm using is 1080 pixels by 1350 pixels. Once the image is resized, all I need to do is make sure to get rid of any imperfections, like this white part at the bottom of the image where I've rotated it. Next, I just want to change the lighting. I noticed that on social media, pictures that are brighter do better for me. And I just use the lasso tool to cut out my fluffy top here because I think there's a bit too much blue in it and I want it to have a little bit more pink in the coloring to match the trousers and then just change my hand from green because that was a bit of a side effect and once that's done i'm ready to go and post on my instagram because i do so many different things organization is super important and i've only just discovered these plastic boxes i use them for everything now it's such a lifesaver the organization tip for you there from someone who definitely is not organized but anyway thank you so much for 100k subs i had no clue that this would happen especially not this quickly like it's actually mad and i'm super looking forward to doing a whole bunch more work for you guys in the future but until then enjoy the rest of your day bye friends